Hello, 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 and welcome to an episode of the Sovereign Society podcast. I've known, I've wanted to share since I started the podcast, and I'm so honored and so excited to have Jenna Black here, because if there's any of the coaches that I have invested in over the years, Jenna is one of the real deals. And so I love her mission. I love her transparency. I love her rawness and her magnetism that really permeates around the world. And we're in two completely different places of the world. And we get to activate this grid together where we get to broadcast this medicine from around the ro- the world in my nation here. And I'm not cutting through the Pacific. I'm going to go the long ass way to Australia. <laughs> I ain't cheating here. I want this message to be spread around the world Um, because like I said, I believe in Jenna. I believe in her medicine and to bear witness to the evolution of her brand has been so beautiful. And we've been Instagram friends for years, also chatting back and forth and, you know, supporting each other with the likes and the comments and all the things. And so, yes, I'm just, I'm so, so grateful you're here with me today, Jenna. Oh, well, I'm so honored, Sabrina. What a beautiful welcome. I just, I'm feeling all the goosebumps right now of us connecting finally on video and just getting to hear each other's voices and being this sacred space for your audience. And yeah, I'm truly honored and so excited. It's definitely a kindred spirit here, uh, this mm. connection here. And it, to me, like the song that just played in my head was reunited and it feels so good. <laughs> okay. Well, we've definitely been in past lives together somewhere. <laughs> now we're like, we're back. Yes, we're <laughs> back. And so I'm, I'm excited for everyone who's tuning in and listening and watching to this episode as well. And so I, I really just want to dive in. Um, because a lot of Jenna's work, if you've never heard of Jenna before, she's very passionate about helping women with wealth and their business and what it means to really magnetize in that wealth, magnetize in the soul babe clients, the success. And I know Jenna is all about the idea and the knowing and the truth that the internal creates the external. And so while there is such an array of like wealth and business coaches coming up to the surface, which is amazing because my mantra and my mission here is to help good people make good money doing great things in the world. Like that's my prophecy. That's like my, the legacy I'm choosing to leave behind. And it's important for us to, to impact and to call in the wealth and not just financial wealth. There's wealth on so many levels it's an inside job. It's about sovereign embodiment. It's about you being in your truth and allowing that resonance to be what magnetizes what it is you're calling in, whether it be wealth, opportunities, relationships, um, collaborations, what have you. So I would love for you to share more about how you knew this was going to be the legacy that you were here to leave behind and really speak up on and share about? Mm. Oh, well, whenever I get asked a question like this, I'm always unsure where to start because there could be, there's so many points in our journey, as you know, but for me, moving into business from day one, I was doing something completely different. I started my business as a holistic health coach and not completely different. There was, there's aspects of what I, what I did back then bring into the work now, but I, was working in the fashion industry before I quit my job. So I was in a very toxic industry. And I think my soul chose that for 10, 11 years for a reason for me to really dive into the opposite of what I wanted to create as my legacy. And so I went through many years of um, being in toxic environments, seeing money as, you know, money was such an ego driven thing in that world. Right. And it was all about money for the me. And I started to win this and my intuition was starting to wake up and my soul was starting to wake up. And what happened for me was actually my body was the thing that spoke to me first. And my body started getting really unwell. When I worked in that industry, I had a lot of issues 
digestion issues, um, migraines, really strange things just started to happen to me. And that was what led me to health coaching. And so I it was almost like I was at work. I remember one day scrolling through Google, searching for something else outside of this world that I was in. And I found health coaching and it was like, what, what is this beautiful world of coaching? I didn't even know what that was back then. This was like seven, eight years ago. <laughs> and that kind of sparked my, my curiosity into the industry that I'm in now. And so I started my first business as a health coach within six weeks. I knew I didn't want to do that. I had a lot of fear coming up. I had a lot of scarcity around money. I found really strange patterns showing up in my business around my pricing and speaking about my gifts and really owning my truth. And so that then sparked this journey of discovering my own money story and really exploring, okay, where is this all coming from? Why am I showing up from a space of fear? Why am I showing up from a space of scarcity or lack? What am I afraid of? And I started to really do all the processing and remembering work around my money story, but not just my money, my self-worth. And that really led me into a deeper spiritual journey of awakening to what wealth really is and what money really is and healing so deeply from my lineage. And that's still work that I do <clears throat> to this day. Um, and Clear me, I've had a bit of, I know I have, had a, <laughs> my family's been a little bit unwell this week as well, but I have got a lot of throat chakra stuff still coming through around it because it was such a journey of taking back my power and being the first one, I believe in my lineage to do that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I hear you on that one because that's we're all being asked right now to really <clears throat> step up and to be embodied in our power because mm. the right now, like collectively, doesn't matter where you are in the world, it's been mm. such testy times after what yeah. 2020 brought. And so yeah. there's a lot of vulnerability and rawness and it feels like <sighs> it's coming out from my mouth and my nose yeah. too. <laughs> It, it's been a reset, you know, and recently for me, when I lost my memory um, in March and then when I had Easter, it was like time with my family mm. and it was an opportunity for me to speak my truth. Mm. And when you have the power to, and the courage to, I should say more of the courage to break those patterns that have been conditioned, um, those stories, maybe around money, maybe around um, wealth, maybe around, um, you know, your level of respect, boundaries, what have you, especially when it's ancestral and, mm. and you have the ability to unapologetically speak your truth and share your experience and not be afraid of what is so-and-so in my family going to think, or like, I can't think yeah. like this, or, you know, if, if, how, if you, if you're able to share your work in one way that maybe some of your family members may not be understand, can you actually be embodied in your power and not allow mm. that, um, to take over any of those insecurities or the people pleasing, um, projections that have been placed onto you by family how can you mm -hmm. pierce through that veil and mm -hmm. I think a lot of that is coming up to the surface right now um, yes. for a lot of people because we need sovereign leaders in all field all walks of life whether you're an entrepreneur or not we need sovereign leaders to show up and set the foundation for this this reality that we get to create together mm-hmm mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, it was so such an interesting journey for me early on with that. I knew that I had to drop back in and I had to continue to build my practice with myself. And that was what really brought me through those early years of discovering my money story and, and building my business. And so back to what you were originally asking me as well, it was discovering my own healing experience with money was this catalyst for me to teach this to other women. It was like, I didn't have a choice. I did not have a choice. It was soul 
plant kept planting it in front of me over and over and over again. And I had so many times where I thought, who am I to teach this? I haven't healed my own stuff yet. I haven't done this yet. What are my family going to think? Um, you know, I've just moved from health coaching. Who am I to claim that I'm now an abundance coach, you know? And so I started with just really trusting and building my connection with my higher self and with my soul and, and remembering in my body what I'm here to create and what my purpose is and my highest mission. And what you mentioned about the people pleasing and being courageous to be different in the, in your lineage, to take a different path. That's something that really showed up strongly for me. And now I notice a lot of women coming through into my field more recently are really moving through that right now, shedding this kind of good girl mentality or the, even the mothering energy as coaches in the coaching industry or people pleasing. And there's so many layers coming through at the moment. So I'm really seeing that as well, but um, ultimately it was me remembering my sovereignty and remembering who I was and choosing to do it even if nobody else believed in me. And at times I think I probably was the only one in my life who believed in it. Even my mm. partner, my now husband, I'm, I'm sure he doubted it along the way. He's, he's my biggest cheerleader, but I'm sure he was like, is this going to work out? Is this a safe thing? I remember my family saying to me when I quit my job, oh, it's very risky. And I always think about that because I often think, well, what's the more risky choice? Staying in a job that's not serving you or the world or following what it is that you desire and what your soul is guiding you to. So yeah, there was something in me that just kept moving forward. <laughs> I did not have a choice in the matter. I don't think <laughs> my and, soul and, is pulling me. And it's, it's a courageous act to even like break out of that comfort zone or the cookie cutter approach of what everyone else mm -hmm. is doing. Cause it's scary to get that vulnerable. Yeah. It's scary to take that leap. But what keeps us going and what keeps us on the path is remembering the bigger picture, the bigger why, the bigger purpose. Mm -hmm. And that's what allows us and fuels us to keep going, especially when the going gets tough. Absolutely. And this is what I always remind my clients and the women that I support with, you know, what is the North Star? What's the bigger mission here? And I always get them to do a legacy exercise where it's mm -hmm. really drawing into your wealthy woman legacy. That's what we call it. When you have that legacy so anchored and you know the bigger mission and purpose and also the long-term impact of your work and of the wealth that you're creating for not just the me, but the we, that's what I say all the time. It's not just about the me, it's about the we. How does this wealth help our world and future generations? And when you have that really anchored and grounded that always keeps you in the flow. It keeps you connected to something mm -hmm. bigger than you. And yeah. And I would love to dive into that more unless you have, yeah. more, to say, you have more to say, but something mm -hmm. that's been, that's been challenging to bear witness to. It, I feel like a lot of coaches have forgotten about the we and have been focused mm -hmm. on the me. Mm -hmm. There's been so much ego that has been driven mm -hmm. lately um, and I've been doing deep, um, grid dismantling with like my, my ground crew, my soul squad who are seeing, um, a lot of the infiltrations in the coaching industry around, um, focusing on more of the wealth versus mm -hmm. how do we also make sure we're being of service? Um, you know, there's been a lot of like coaches that are I'm not, I have no problem with people offering high-end ticket experiences and programs. What I do have a problem with is when you don't deliver that high value and of service. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's been something that I've been witnessing for a long time. I know part of my work is dismantling the um, infiltrations in the coaching industry mm -hmm. that have been more manipulative. Um, dangling the carrot. And those patterns are actually what continue the story of like money is bad yeah. or like those situations because wealth has the ability to bring real change. We can give back to places and spaces and people 
who need that support, organizations and communities, we can implement real change. I'm so for that. I, I believe that money is a powerful tool. But if we continue to focus on just the money and not yeah. focus about the importance of the service, we are going to continue that story um, and that uh, condition and belief that has been programmed of what we've been taught. And so mm. it's about dismantling that paradigm, which has kept us, that's the very old Piscean way around money. But now that we're in this golden age of the Aquarian age, it's more about community and collaboration comp mm -hmm. and versus competition, which is what mm -hmm. so much of that fighting has been. That's what we need to focus on is how can we focus, like you said, it's not just about the me, but the we. And mm -hmm. with that, how can we make sure that that wealth that we are generating is integrous and sustained? Mm -hmm. Yeah, such a powerful question or double question. So, and I've, I've, I've absolutely seen it too in the coaching industry and in many industries and, and the number one thing is that we have to be coming back into what's our mission. We're not actually creating a coaching business just to make money for ourselves. And if we are, then those people are going to struggle to build sustainability in their business. But the biggest, most important thing to start with is what are we here to do? What is the impact or the influence or the change that we're here to make through our work? Why do we care about our clients? I mean, my sole clients are my family to me. <laughs> I'm like, mm -hmm. I know I call women into my orbit and I'm sure you're the same, Sabrina, that it's like we're connected. We've been connected before. There's something so in alignment when you really find those people coming into your field. And when the programs end, you're like heartbroken. <laughs> I know. I'm like, please don't, like, can we be friends now? Outside of this? I remember having a funny conversation with one of my private clients the other day and our coaching container had finished. And she's like, so are we now just best friends? Is that our new title? I'm like, yes, that's our new title. <laughs> because it really is a co-creation process. It's a partnership. And I see... In the coaching industry, there is a strain of people focusing on, oh, okay, 10K months, 20K months, whatever the numbers are that get thrown around. And it's very vapid. It doesn't have any integrity to it because it's all coming from ego. But it's also coming from a space of scarcity of I need this. I need to get this so that I can prove myself that I'm worthy or successful or be one of the top coaches or whatever it might be, these stories that have infiltrated. And so the most important thing is, what is the bigger mission? Who are you actually here to support? Why? Why do you care about the work that you're doing? Is it really just for the money or is it deeper? And that when I work with women around this, when they align deeper with that mission, that's when the abundance is automatically flowing because it opens up this stream then, this connection with money. I see money as such a beautiful ally, a friend, even a lover, you get to form a beautiful relationship with it. It's here to help us create generational wealth, invest that wealth, circulate it, redistribute it. And so bringing in through our coaching businesses or through our healing businesses or as leaders, it's about saying, okay, well, I desire this money yes, there's aspects that we want to be nourished and live abundant lives ourselves. But what is it about the we that we care about? From the me to the we. I say that in my programs all the time. I'm sure my clients are like, yep, yep. <laughs> but I really love people to take that in and embody it. It's not about just the me. It's about the we. And so, you know, for example, in my business, we're always donating a portion of our earnings to charities and, and working with different charities throughout the year, um, working with some Indigenous charities in Australia at the moment, and that feels really beautiful. Um, also circulating it back into my clients' experiences. As mm -hmm. you said, really creating a high-touch, high-value experience for people from integrity, actually nurturing and caring for these people, not just another number in your course or another number in your client schedule. These are human beings. These are souls. And it's a sacred contract that with each individual that we work with. Because they're investing in you. Mm -hmm. you know, they're investing in themselves, of course, but they're investing in you because mm -hmm. they believe in you. Yeah. 
they have trust. You're, you're here to hold this container for them as they embark on their evolution. It doesn't matter what field you're in. They're coming in to make mm. a shift. They're coming in to, to better themselves, to become stronger and more in their power. And that's a, there's a responsibility yeah. there. Yeah, absolutely. And if absolutely. you, if you're, if you're under delivering, mm because there's just been such a focus on like the numbers or like I can post on my Instagram how much I made this month or this quarter mm -hmm. with and most of those people never talk about their expenses either so they're mm -hmm. always talking about gross income never income which I've noticed a lot of the time that's very true yeah um these are the things that you know I'm choosing to like bring into awareness like even on having these conversations because mm. with this awareness how can we be the solution and and, and with this recognition of like, okay, if this is what's happening, how am I choosing to be that sacred disruptor of that pattern that's actually um, more draining to the beautiful synergy that this industry or whatever industry you're in has the power to create? Absolutely. Yeah. It is such the coaching industry. It's, it's so interesting when you witness the shadow and the light that, that moves through it because it's such a powerful being in itself. This coaching industry that is coming through right now has the power to create such amazing change in mm -hmm. the world, or it has the power to pull people out of their power. So it's, it's like the leaders that we're familiar with and that we're surrounding ourselves with are using it as such a conscious, powerful tool to give back, to remind people that they have the answer, that they're sovereign. You know, I'm very conscious of anyone that says that they have the answer outside of me or, you know, I always yeah. say to my clients, avoid, be aware of people that are selling or marketing to you in a way that they're saying that they have the answer and that you don't, or they're making you feel like there's not the, the power to tap in within you. Or um, that they have to, they have to tap into an entity outside of them to get this answer talking to, yeah. you know, these beings or whatever, um, mm -hmm. outside rather than continuing to help people recognize that check in with yourself, mm -hmm. listen to yourself. But if you still have a lot of, uh, self-doubt or those insecurities, unprocessed traumas, emotions, mm -hmm. um, beliefs that have been infiltrating your light and your spirit, if you're giving more of your power to that, more of your belief to those stories, mm -hmm. And of course, you're going to keep looking for answers outside of yourself. And, and we invest in these people, not so much for answers outside, but more so for that container to be held. And they're, they're rooting for us and they're cheering with us. Yeah. And of course, like there's different um, codes, beliefs, um, teachings and wisdoms each of us carry, of course. Um, mm. Not everyone knows everything. Some people aren't great at tech. Some people aren't great with like money management. And so we yeah. can invest in these coaches or whatever um, to help us get there. Um, but that's why, like I said, it's just so important to make sure that part of it's not just leading with integrity, but it's also holding that container um, with, con with integrity. So important. Absolutely. So important. I make that very clear with my, especially my private containers where it is a co-creation process, you know, just what the boundaries are and the different role. You know, I'm not here to save you. I'm not the healer. You will, I will hold the space and the codes to, to help you to tap in and heal yourself. You're healing yourself ultimately. Mm -hmm. And just really bringing my clients back into their power. And of course, as you said, then there are different elements that we can teach on and train on that are our mastery. But ultimately, it's about always bringing it back in when I work with clients into what is soul aligned for you. What is your soul saying is a yes? Because what might work for me might feel not completely in integrity for someone else. And so that's my biggest practice with my clients in every program that I teach is bringing them back into knowing how to read their own energy, knowing how to hear from their body, and also really connect with their intuition and soul so that they've got that uh, guiding point because I know early on in my coaching business, I was so outside of myself. I was looking at everyone else. I thought totally. that all these other people had the answers totally. constantly, constantly. I wasted years. Do I not wasted? I'm sorry. I spent years doing that. And now I'm, I teach my clients and I help my clients to understand how to really come back into their sovereignty and their power. And then when they're learning from someone else, bring it through their own 
filtration system like mm-hmm. does this feel aligned is this a yes is my body awakening to this does this feel like a code that I want to accept or not and and using that as a tool yeah the discernment is a big piece mm. um and with that discernment again what resonates and the more you mm. cultivate that relationship with yourself with spirit um with you know who you are at the core, you'll be able that bullshit meter will be stronger. The discernment yes. will be stronger and the ability to take that leap will be, I don't mm. say easier necessarily because, you know, sometimes it can be like, Oh, it can be scary, yeah. but there's that there's more of an inner trust of yes. like, Hey, we got this, you know, like I got this. And that, mm-hmm. that gets to be, um, experienced and, um, expressed and really embodied the more we give ourselves permission. And I think like what you said, how you caught yourself of like, I wasted no, because, you know, there's Intel from those years or those experiences that maybe didn't work out the way you wanted to. Maybe there's like little pieces you've learned. Maybe you didn't get like the whole intention of like, you know, what you wanted with, from that experience or whatever, but you've learned what to do, what not to do. How Mm. can you choose to be the solution? What can you do? I don't want to say necessarily better, but how can you do something with a little more like with your way? Mm -hmm. And absolutely. I think that's a thing to remember too. Cause I've, like I said, and, and I've been sharing before I've spent tens of thousands of dollars on coaches thinking, like you said, answers were going to be outside of me because I still had a lot of that inner child trauma and repression and outdated beliefs that I still allowed to run the show because I bypassed it not not to look at it. And so I think it's important rather than continuing to just layer on like more of these coaching experiences, programs, whatever, are you also giving yourself time to do that deeper work? And I think that's the big piece that I always infuse in my programs is like, before we dive into like what you invested in with this program, we're going to spend at least a week or two diving into the deeper stuff because for you to continue to accelerate into this higher level to this next space, you've got to make sure that you're clearing out the debris in your sacred vessel so that when more comes in, it's, it's actually like being held. It's embodying. Yeah. And yes. And integrating. So important. And this is what I do. I'm actually, we just started a new program this week in my business. And the first thing I'm getting them to do is actually do a social media detox. Let's stop looking at everyone else's stuff for a week mm-hmm. and drop back in and do some inner child work and some release work and, and really deeply embody what it is that you desire to create and encouraging this beautiful group that I'm, um, supporting to spend a whole week not looking at anyone else's not consuming anything Mm -hmm. really and just coming from a space of I am the creatress I get to create what am I contributing what do I desire to add to this world from a space of not being infiltrated by what someone else has just posted on Instagram Mm -hmm. (laughs) and we can get so caught up in it and and yeah really important that we that we do the shadow work and the release work and actually look at it and heal it. And this is why, you know, I work with different tools like inner child healing and embodiment practices and hypnosis and all different things in my toolbox. But so important that we do that releasing work first. And ultimately I always say it's about remembering who you are underneath everyone else's stuff (laughs) that's been infiltrated into your system. Yep. And, uh, you know, this is the thing that we also have to navigate through social media is still relatively new compared to yeah. the like humanity. Mm. Um, so we need to understand and make sure not only what resonates what and who we follow, who we don't, but how do we cultivate these healthy boundaries, um, around social media, like, when I lost my memory, I was on a social media detox. I usually like to do a social media detox, like at least like two weeks when I embark on a new program, just so that I can be fully present for my, for my clients. Yes. me too. When, I, when I've shared in the past on like pe- people on this conversation, like, yeah, I've taken social media, like sabbaticals before. And like, you've done what? And I'm like, yeah, it's the only way that yeah. I can <laughs> honor my sanity. Um, and it's, it's how I choose to take care and nourish me. Um, Mm -hmm. and I think we need to have more of that conversation and I am seeing more people talking about that. 
Um, Mm. but you know, there's much of this divide and conquer programming that's happening right now, um, in the collective doesn't matter where we are. And so, you know, we're still like acclimating to this world with like things not fully open or like talks about like you not being able to have medical sovereignty. Like there's all these different things that are coming at us and Mm. it's energetically happening right now. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that radical self-nourishment, social media sabbaticals, um, asking for help. A lot of people have a hard time asking for support and for help when people feel like, oh, I have to be the strong one all the time. Like you have total permission to, to, to reach out and like ask someone to like support you (laughs) while you're going through Mm. a challenging time, because as we continue to up level, there will be things uncovered. We may or may not have been aware of, um, subconsciously, um, you know, from their childhood, um, ancestrally. And, you know, I I'm feeling grateful that we live in a time where we can speak up about that and like have more transparency around mental health. Um, absolutely. That's, going to help you with your energetic help. And you can have all of the money in the world, but if you are mentally unstable or unhealthy, it's not going to mean shit. Mm -hmm. So I know for you, you are really passionate also talking about wealth flow, many different avenues as well, whether it be spiritually, whether it be energetically, whether it be financially. And I would love for you to talk more about that because that's my prayer for wealth and and uh, money coaches, leaders to continue to share more about that. It's not so much about in your bank account. And I know we've been, we talked about this a little bit in the beginning, but what it also means to be of energetic wealth and of spiritual wealth. Yeah, absolutely. It's so important. And from day one, venturing into this work, I knew that I didn't want to just speak about money itself, money manifestation. I wanted to talk about wealth on every level. For me, wealth is an inner energy first. It's an internal state of being. Abundance is an internal state of being. And that is the most important place to start with. Because if you're not feeling abundant within, if you're not feeling tapped into your soul, your worth from within, then the external physical manifestation of money, there'll be a disconnect. There'll be a discord between the two energies. And so, I am really passionate about when I work with my clients, with the beautiful people in my world, I don't want them to walk away just manifesting their money goal. For me, it's, does that feel energetically sustainable? Does that feel nourishing? Does that feel aligned? Do you feel empowered creating that money? Do you know and feel free to redistribute consciously and invest that money to support others? This is what I really care about, the deeper energy of wealth so that we're creating wealth consciously through our spiritual missions, through our soul purpose. And this is where we move away from that greed energy around money into there is an infinite supply that we get to pull from and let's pull from that supply to then give that back and redistribute that consciously to people who really need it to causes that we care about back into our businesses to support our clients growth. And so it's energetic, spiritual, physical, mental, emotional, and the physical aspect of the actual physical manifestation of money is only a small portion of it really, but that flows larger with more ease when we are in the wealth alignment within. And, you know, a lot of money coaches in, the industry talk around money mindset being the most important thing. And I'm a big believer in blending the energetics and the embodiment. I really believe that actually the mind is almost like the last step to the whole process. It's the body remembers the body is where we store trauma, where we store Mm -hmm. our ancestral DNA and lineage and everything's in this beautiful vessel. And so I work with my clients around the body first, integrating with the soul. And then we layer on top the mindset work. Mm -hmm. because if your body doesn't feel safe to receive money or to then share that money, then 
we're missing the, the whole point of it. And so we want to start with that first and allow that influx of energy to flow through as in money to flow through and the body to feel safe to receive it and then redistribute it as well. Because really. what you're sharing is really the new paradigm of, of how we experience wealth. That yeah. is, that is, you know, for so long we've, you know, yes, I mean, it's still relatively new talking about like the importance of embodiment and all those pieces. It's been so focused on mindset, mindset, mindset. Mm. But to me, you know, when I think of the, the lower triangle, the lower three chakras that we've been, you know, taught for so long, sh- stuff that's been programmed, conditioned, traumas, pain, unprocessed, whatever, um, mm-hmm. subconscious, that's all formed from the ages of zero to 22. Yeah. And then the heart is the bridge from the upper triangle, which is the throat, the third eye, the crown, which is the, you know, the spiritual reality. So for our physical mm-hmm. reality, the lower triangle, uh, the spiritual reality, the upper three chakras. So if you get like, if you're saying like, you know, your throat earlier, mm. um, ancestral, you know, of like speaking your truth yeah. people like that, your heart is the bridge between the physical and the spiritual. And mm. that blood that that's coming from the heart is coming from throughout the body, that wealth, where we get to be of service, where we get to give back, where we get to invest in um, causes and things that we believe in. That's all heart. And that Mm -hmm. is what permeates through the body. Yeah. From head to toe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, when I work with my clients, it's, it's really bringing through all of those elements, bridging the spiritual, the heart, and the body, but also bringing through your ancestral lineage and working with your ancestors. I had a really beautiful experience earlier this year. I think it was in uh, early February and I was at a women's circle with four of my close friends in Sydney here and my mother's female lineage, all of the, all the lineage on my mother's side came through in this meditation, like Mm. there was just so many beings and some I had met in real life before they passed and others I didn't know, but I heard this message. You are the one that we've waited for to start the new lineage. This Mm. is why you're taking part in this work. And it was such a powerful remembrance. It was like, you're the one that we've chosen to come through at this time. And I have a daughter and she's 16 months now. And I, and I see the power of, as you said, from ages zero to 22, I see the power now of these new women, men coming through, beings coming through into this planet at this time. And if we choose consciously to create wealth in a different way, how powerful that is for future generations. And I say in in one of my programs, Money Queen, I always reference from week one, I always say we are the pioneers of prosperity, the new paradigm of prosperity. And we get to be that in our lineage. And that is so deep and so powerful and so potent. And if we choose to work with that consciously, I mean, it gives me goosebumps thinking about what we can create together as a collective. And that's the the beautiful piece about it is that, you know, if there's been these um, conditions, these beliefs, these um, programs that have been passed down from our lineage, you know, and they didn't have the awareness, the tools, the teachings to dismantle that. Yeah. And I posted the other day, like we are the generation that gets to stop systemic mm. racism. We are the generation yes. that gets to speak up rather than feeling like, oh, this is so that overwhelming that we have to. Yeah. yeah. Mm. This is a gift that we get to experience exactly. when we came here, especially the, the ones that are like the last of the nine, the 1900s, the last of the thousands. Like I'm talking, if you were born in 2000, like you're a completely different generation. But those of mm. us that the millennials that get to be the bridge. And yes. I think that's why there's so much um, like bullshit in like media talking about millennials is because we are the sacred disruptors. We are the ones yes. that get to bridge 
what were the golden nuggets that we got from that whole other millennia that we get to infuse into here? And what do we get to dismantle, purge out and clear out for our ans- from our ancestors, line- lineages, um, societies, cultures? We get mm. to say it ends, it ends, it ends with me and it ends now. Mm. And I feel like the, the sooner we allow ourselves, and I mean, everyone has their own process. We are all, um, you know, unfolding and embarking on this journey as we go. But the sooner we give ourselves permission to dive in and do that really challenging at times work of the inner child, ancestral, what have you, we'll be able to clear any of the, the, the connections we have with our ancestors that have passed on so that they can continue to guide us and support Mm -hmm. us as we live out our dharma and our soul's mission and are taking that leap uh, yeah. consciously um, to be the change, implement real change for the generations to come. And I know for me, one of the biggest pieces, oh, it makes me really emotional because like I'm coming up to like a lot of really, really big anniversaries um, mm. as we record this, especially like probably today would have been like, 22 years to the day that like I went through a very deep healing that I really cleared out on Easter Mm. um, with my family. But when we give ourselves permission to, to have those conversations with family, to clear out, to make space, imagine the doors that also opens up for, you know, our family members that are like the closest to us that support where we don't feel those burdens. And we don't, I'm not saying we had to take on those burdens, but those can be, um, energies that can be more draining because it's family. It's more of a yeah. connection in that sense. Mm. Um, so I know for me, what, what, st- what had me have that initiation into my spiritual journey was I knew I wanted to help heal my family. And that yeah. for me, it was when I, you know, on Easter, when I'm having a difficult conversation with my family, um, of like trauma that I had, but me having the courage to do that, my other cousins felt safe to share their journeys and their experiences that have held them back. Yeah. And so that's the power of vulnerability and that's the power of doing the work and choosing to share, um, with integrity, those Mm -hmm. difficult conversations and, um, to bring awareness more so. And it doesn't matter if it's like a family talk or whatever, but the more you're bringing awareness of like, you are embodied in your power, you're sharing your truth and you're going to have a difficult conversation with someone. Yeah. What kind of doors that opens? Absolutely. And I actually, I had full goosebumps when you were sharing that because I had a very similar experience in terms of, uh, family and cousins being in a, in a situation where I was sharing and bringing to light when I st- struggled with depression and had a suicide attempt when I was 16 years old. And that, when that happened originally at that age, it was very shunned down. You know, my family couldn't quite handle it, understand. I think my parents really struggled with me growing up being highly sensitive and, and intuitive and they, you know, very empathic. And I don't think they knew how to handle my emotional range. It was you know, all over the place when I was young and learning how to handle that. And so when I had that happen to me, that was very much quietened down in my family. And so I had a similar um, situation in terms of family coming together and me speaking it out into the open. And my cousins were there. And one of my cousins who also struggled with mental health was like, I'm so grateful that you shared this. I feel safer to speak about what I've been going through. And now we've been able to support her in that journey as well. And so there is so much power in, in that, in bringing forth the shadow and, and really allowing ourselves to feel it and feel the emotion and feel the trauma and go there. And, and even if without we don't remember so exactly without shame. Mm-hmm. And even if we don't remember or have certain memories, because maybe the trauma has actually numbed it from our system, our body still remembers. Right. And mm-hmm. so this is why even with money work, I mean, there's so much trauma around money as well, and especially racial oppression and systemic oppression. And it's just so many layers, so many layers that if we're not allowing ourselves to go there, then we're going to continue to have these cycles play out in our businesses And also showing up from scarcity or lack around growth in our business. And so it's really important that we, 
work with the body and that we work with the subconscious and Mm -hmm. and create a safe space for people to do that in our in our vortexes that people enter in and that's a coach or a healer and that's part of these high ticket investments you are creating a safe space for people to also have doesn't Mm -hmm. matter if it's high ticket or not but like especially high ticket you're creating a safe space for people where they could where they're coming in and investing money that they've earned Mm -hmm. you know like time and money that they've earned you're holding this container for their transformation and you know it's important to help them feel it's important to help them feel part of something absolutely rather like you said than just another number and so Mm -hmm. that's something i've been really passionate about and i know like i said that's a huge part of my work right now um i you know for so long i was so deep in the work of helping people do a lot of the deep work. Like I don't do basic bitch spirituality. I don't do like (laughs) airy fairy shit. Like I want to go to the depth of your soul so that you can have a stronger, bigger vessel to call in the abundance, the experience, the opportunities that will make you a better leader. That's been my driving force from the beginning of when I started this work. Mm -hmm. And you know, shifting more and like for a long time, I was very insecure to shift into branding and systems. And, but it took me embracing like my inner geek and like what I'm good at has always been systems and like spending time on understanding how to build things, you know, online or whatever um, brands and that aspect. But I'm now like with what I've experienced, what I've been able to embody, that's where we're, that's where we can lead. And it's yeah. from embracing, um, who you are. It's from embracing what's brought you here. It's about embracing the changes and the failures and, you know, the moments of defeat without the shame. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Cause that's what and makes you a well-rounded human. Yeah. And let's bring more transparency into these industries that we're in around challenges and around, as you said before, the mental health and and all the different energetic things playing out, we need to create more safety, I think, in our communities to speak about when we're struggling, to speak about the real challenges that flow into business. And, you know, just in December, I remember having going through a really dark patch of not feeling like I even wanted to be showing up. And I just took the whole month off social media and I was very much in my cave-like energy of, I knew that I was calibrating to a new level, but I had a lot of shadow work and childhood trauma coming through that I thought I'd, you know, handled, but it was still coming through. And so leaning into support, speaking about it, and that was something that took courage for me to do. But it's so, I think we need more conversations like this in our industry of bringing through the different levels and also understanding that our work is an alchemy of our shadow, our light, our trauma, our wins, our challenges. It's usually what we've gone through in us in, you know, what we've struggled through or what we've overcome that we then bring into our medicine and then pass on to other people. And so there needs to be more of that alchemy coming through and transparency around that, I believe. Hell yeah. I mean, that's, I, I love to see myself as that brand alchemist. Um, because yeah. that to me is what really magnetizes absolutely soul babe clients. That to me is what magnetizes the people who will respect you. Um, mm. So if you are worried that, you know, having or sharing a difficult experience is going to tarnish your brand, then you're missing what it means to be human. And I think people are craving mm. more of that in business Absolutely. because there is no, they, like the, the coaches you're investing in, they're not a, they're not a guru. They're not like a hierarchy better than you. And that's been my drive. And yeah. how can we, how can we sit at this table together? Yes. It doesn't matter. How can we walk alongside each other together? Totally. And it doesn't yes. matter if you're in different um, financial brackets or not. Mm. But if you are continuing to increase your wealth, how can you still treat someone who maybe isn't like a multiple six figure earner? How can you treat them with the same respect as you would someone who's a seven figure earner or whatever as well? So important. Yes. Yes. My body's in goosebumps because I just had a conversation with a client the other day about someone treating her 
less than because she was new to business or Mm -hmm. saying almost like, oh, well, you can hang out with me when you're at this level, or we can maybe collaborate when you're at this level. Talk about mean girls. (laughs) Yeah. This kind of mean girl energy. And it's just, it needs to stop and it needs to be brought to the surface. And I really believe though, that the people who are here that will be in this for the long run, that will actually create sustainable change and create conscious change in the world long-term and build really beautiful businesses are the ones that are leading with that integrity. And there's no hierarchy. There's no pedestal. It's I walk alongside you. I sit beside you and we're all equal in that. And I think that that's what we're going to, I think we're really seeing that already people dropping off that aren't able to access that integrity Mm -hmm. at this time. So yeah, yeah, you know, that's for me a huge, that's like the number one core value of my brand is definitely integrity and then sovereignty as well, you know, and if, if people yeah. don't resonate with what I'm sharing anymore, may you be blessed, you know, and there's plenty yeah. of other people, but I, something that's really important that I've realized when I lost my memory in March and seeing who are the ones that actually have had my back. And I've sat mm. side, by, side by side with me. It was a huge eye opener because I reached out to people in the industry just sharing like, you know, I really appreciate you. And, and coaches, I felt like I got fucked over by too. And mm. I let them know, like, you know, I lost my memory. I don't remember taking your program because um, I lost my memory essentially of like all of 2021 and some of 2020, like I, my short term yeah. memory completely gone. And I reached out to some very emotionally, like crying on these messages saying, thank you. And I never got like a response back from them. Mm. And it's not like I need that approval, but it's just like, you Mm. know, it's just, fuck, I'm going through a tough time right now. And I'm sharing from like my heart and soul. And then you've seen other people who are like constantly checking in on me and uh, sending me messages right when I fucking need it. Like I'm about to go to a CAT scan and they're telling me that they're going to inject metal into me, a heavy metal. Mm. And me saying like, no, I mm. don't want, I don't consent to this. And I get mm. a text message right there from my dear sister, Danielle Mercurio. And I'm like, huh, thank you. You have no idea how much I needed that yes. message right now. Yeah. So mm. that's the thing that I, I just pray for all of you who think as well is that, yes, who are the people who are going to sit side by side with you? Who are the people yeah. who are going to have your back? And how are you choosing to, especially when it comes to your clients who are investing in you, how can you invest back into them? Maybe it isn't even financially, but it can be energetically. It can be through prayer. um, It can be in so many ways. And I think that's what we need to remember is how can we create this beautiful, again, synergy of give and take, um, the receiving, the give and receive, and um, the asking for help and the overall support because you can send a message when when you have no idea how it's going to impact someone else Mm, beautiful what an incredible story and everything you've moved through over the last few months and I absolutely agree that we just need to have more of that just let's go back to real human nature of Mm -hmm. community and connection and nurtureship and care genuinely caring. I think that's what I've noticed in the industry is just that infiltration of the ego coming through. And this is why when we talk about topics like money, you know, a lot of people are focused on that. That's focused on what can I get? What can I do for myself? And we're missing the whole point of that alchemy of co-creating with other people and collaborating with other people and really growing together. Um, as you said, the give and the receive and really bringing that into a beautiful cycle. Um, And that's something that I'm really passionate about as well is helping my clients to tap into that too. Because often I'll have clients that are coming to me with their goals being very ego-based. And it's like, let's strip this all the way back. Why do you care about this? What are you here to actually do? What's the contribution? What's the legacy? Mm -hmm. And then they notice that the money flows with so much more ease from that space because money has that beautiful intention and purpose and direction to flow through it's actually here to express through us to create our legacies and so it there's this richness to it that doesn't come from a space of trying so hard to figure out how to make it or get it but it's like I'm tapped into my mission I'm anchored into my purpose and and money gets to be my ally in creating that Mm. so there's just this beautiful synergy that happens and yeah it's it's something that our industries need more 
more of more magic. <laughs> and we and we get to we get to lead by having this conversation and having yes. people feel safe that you know they aren't alone and they can take that leap. Yes, absolutely. And and you know you'll find those people that are your soul family. I believe, I, as you said, you knew who your close friends were with or who was here to support you when you receive those messages. And you'll find, I feel, as we leap forward, as we bravely, courageously say, this is what I desire to do. This is what I desire to contribute. You meet those people along the way. They come into your orbit. They come into, they're in resonance with your energy and you're in resonance with their energy. And so, you know, it feels lonely at times. I've had times in my business where I've felt so lonely yeah, especially because I'm the only entrepreneur in my family and with my close friends outside of business. Now I have beautiful soul sisters in business, but that I've met through business, but it's just been, yeah, there's moments where I felt really lonely. And I think that needs to be spoken about more as well that, you know, it's okay to feel that way and that you will find your people and to continue to focus on what you are here to do and what your mission is, because that's when you find your people. You'll find your people when you find you. Yes. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. I, I totally believe in that. Um, and mm. that's where the importance of the deprogramming, clearing out what's not in alignment and mm. sharing from that space of embodiment. But I mean, I can talk to you all day. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Let's just hang like out. <laughs> like I said, we've been waiting for this conversation for a long time. I've like, when I first started my podcast, like I've always had like a potential list and I've had Jenna on there. And uh, I just was like, I just need to reach out to her because I'm feeling like with where both of us are, something really beautiful is going to come. And that's part of the divine yeah. timing and, and knowing that the conversations that are meant to be experienced and to be shared will happen at just the right time. Yeah. And so, absolutely. Um, to close out, I want to ask some lightning rounds if you're open to Oh, it. yes, let's do it. All right. What does sovereignty mean to you? Mm. Complete ownership over your gifts and who you are and what you came here to do. Mm. What animal totem has been really guiding you lately? Mm. The owl. Mm. Um quietness, sovereignty. The owl is in the dark in the cave. I've, I've been in that energy lately. Mm. So yeah. And I've been seeing them everywhere as well. <laughs> yes. Mm. What would you say to younger Jenna? Mm. Thank you. Thank you for Thank you for allowing yourself to be that sensitive child, to be that intuitive child, to be that nurturer. And even if nobody else understood you to just keep moving through that and know that that was your gift all along. So mm -hmm. I'm really grateful for, for her. Yeah. Oh, that makes me emotional. Mm. Cause I, and I have a very similar experience with what I would share with my inner child as well. Yeah. Where can we find more of you? So jennablack.co is my online home. Um, and then on social media, Instagram is really where I hang out. I'm like you or Instagram friends. <laughs> um, jennablack.official on Instagram and also on Facebook, although I don't use it too often. Um, but yeah, my website, jennablack.co has all of my programs and experiences. And yeah, you can message me on Instagram. If you heard this episode, I'd love to hear as well and connect. I always like to chat on my DMs. <laughs> Amazing. And what last little nugget of wisdom would you like to share to whoever's listening? Mm. Mm. To remember that you have the ability to create the life that you came here to create and to be courageous and leap in and find your people along the way. And even if it feels lonely, even if it feels overwhelming to continue to stay connected to that North star and to your soul and to your sovereignty and to trust that, to really trust yourself more than anyone else, because you have that answer. You have that roadmap within you. Mm, I love that. Thank you so much again for 
going there with me and being so transparent and seeing what I'm seeing and choosing to be part of the solution. I, like I said, of the women that I've invested in, in programs, I've done, I've invested in multiple of Jenna's programs back when, and this is one of the teachers that I know is embodied in what she's sharing, embodied in her truth and sharing that with such grace and compassion and love and integrity. So I'm again, so grateful and adore you. And I continue looking forward to bear witness to this evolution and this metamorphosis you're, you're constantly embarking on as well of yourself and how you're choosing and answering the call to be of service. So again, I just appreciate you and I love you. And thank you again for this really beautiful conversation today. Thank you. I really deeply appreciate it. And I adore you and your work and what you're creating. And truly this, even just your podcast alone is such a magical vortex of Mm -hmm. conscious leaders and people. So thank you for bringing our messages through and sharing my work today. I really appreciate it. And I love you as well. Love you. And if you're tuning in, like Jenna said, tag us and let us know that you're listening to this conversation because both of us love to be in the dm so we want to chat with you all and hear what nuggets of wisdom you got from this but again thank you for tuning in go check out jenna's work and if you aren't following her on the gram jump on it because her content is just always so powerful and beautiful and uh again i'm i'm just really grateful that you all got to listen to um this transmission as well because i already knew it was going to be powerful so again thank you all for tuning in. Thank you, Jenna, and we'll be seeing more of you soon. Take care.